Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here with Strategic Test Prep. Have you ever done an SAT math word problem and wondered what the heck they're asking for or got really confused by all the information that they give you? Sometimes word problems can be so overwhelming and daunting that they're easy to get wrong. So today I'm gonna to show you a strategy. It's called working backwards, and it's an easier way to get all the points you can on these SAT word problems. Let me show you how it works. The type of problem that you can use working backwards on is typically a word problem with integers as the answer choices. So as you can see in this number 10, I have a word problem, I have integer answer choices. I'm gonna read this word problem. A group of 202 people went on an overnight camping trip, taking 60 tents with them. Some of the tents held two people each and the rest held four people each. Assuming all the tents were filled to capacity and every person got to sleep in a tent, exactly how many of the tents were two person tents? <laughs> Say what? So maybe at this point you're confused and you're not sure where to go. You're gonna go straight to the question. How many of the tents were two person tents? That's how you know what those answer choices represent. They're two person tents. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the answer choices and here's a tip for you. Start with a middle answer choice. If you start with 30, then if it's too big, you gotta to go to 20. If it's too big, you have to go to 19. So you might have to test three answers till you get to the right answer. But if you start with a middle number, you'll only have to test one or two. If 20 is too small, you know the answer is A. If 20 is too big, you only have to try one more, 19, and then you'll know if it's 19 or 18. So I'm gonna take 20 and I'm gonna use it in the problem. Those are two people tents. So I'm going to do 20 times two. So I know there's 40 people in the two person tents. Now, if there were 22 person tents, it said they took 60 tents with them. So that would mean there's 40 four person tents. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 40 by four because they said all the tents were filled to capacity. So that's 160 people. Now, when I go to add those together, I get 200. Does that match what the problem says? It doesn't because the problem says there are 202 people that went. So then I have to think, okay, so it's not 20. Do I need to go up or do I need to go down? Well, if we need more people, that means we're gonna need one more four person tent probably and one less two person tent. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna change these numbers. I'm gonna make my four person tent 41 and I'm gonna make my two person tent 19. I'm taking one away from the two person tent. That means now we're trying C. And when I do 19 times two, I get 38. When I do 41 times four, I get 164. Well, let's see what happens when we add those together. <gasps> we get 202, so that's how I know my answer is 19. So take the answer choices, use them to your advantage, plug them back into the problem, start with a middle number, and you won't go wrong. Working backwards can work on other problems that aren't just word problems, and I wanted you to see an example of this. The key is you have to have numbers as your answers, though. You cannot have variables in the answer choices. As you can see in this number eight, there are numbers in the answer choices. Now, I'm gonna go straight to the question because I'm already confused. I'm not sure how to solve number eight, okay? So it says, what is the possible value of x plus one? Okay, so that means they wanna know what this whole thing equals, this x plus one. So I'm gonna start with a number, let's start with C, just to see one that doesn't work. I'll start with the middle number C. I'm gonna substitute two in for x plus one. So I have two equals two over two. Well, we know that's not true because two over two is one. Two does not equal one, so two doesn't work. And then if we went to four, just is another example. If I put in four, then I have four equals two over four. Well, that doesn't work either because four does not equal one half. So let's try B, let's try radical two. I'm kind of wary to try A. I'm already playing a little majority rules and I know A looks like a super oddball. It's the only um, two term expression in there. I just don't like it. The other ones are just one number. So I'm thinking it might be B. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put B into the problem. Is radical two equal to two over radical two? Well, I can't simplify two over radical two easily if I'm on a no calculator question. But what I could do is force a fraction on the other side and cross multiply. Radical two times radical two is radical four. Two times one is two. Does radical four equal two? It sure does. So there you go, B works.
All right. So thanks guys for watching. Try working backwards on some word problems and keep coming back.